When the House voted in November to impeach President Trump, Congressman Jeff Van Drew of New Jersey was one of three Democrats to vote against the article's impeachment. Since then, he switched parties. He faces at least three Republican primary challengers. And on the Democratic side, a couple of hopefuls are hoping to take him on. So we're joined by a Skype by one of those candidates. Ashley Bennett is an Atlantic County freeholder. She declared her run for the Congress following Congressman Van Drew's vote against impeachment. Ashley, it's great to see you. Welcome to Rising. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, Ashley, Ryan was enlightening me a little bit on your origin story and about how you got yourself into politics. Why don't you uh, lay that out for the audience? And I think I believe it starts with the Women's March. Yes. So um, I wanted to go to the uh, official Women's March, right, in 2017. Unfortunately, I was a unable to attend. And um, I watched it online, was super inspired by the movement. And then my own elected official posted on Facebook, will the Women's March be over in time to cook dinner? I then wrote him a letter. And then after that, I went to a, a freeholder meeting uh, and uh, waited for him to apologize. And if I can set the stage for that meeting, there were lines outside of the door. Someone brought a textbook on feminism. Someone brought takeout menus. Uh, there was a box of macaroni and cheese that was brought. And uh, we were waiting for him to apologize, and he said, well, the women I surround myself with are strong, sure of themselves, and they didn't get offended by this. Mm -hmm. And so many of us took that as, oh, so because we found it offensive, we're weak and sensitive and insecure. So I, and along with many other women um, and residents, walked out of the meeting. And then from there, I decided I was going to run for that seat. I contacted my local party, um, and shortly after that, I, I sat with them and went through the process, and they had um, a few other people that they were interviewing to possibly run, and I got a call a week before our convention, and they said, congratulations, you're our candidate, send us a headshot, your press release goes out tomorrow, and have a speech prepared for Friday for the convention. Huh. And so it was pretty much a world win. <laughs> right. So... He's now a former freeholder, and you're the right. uh, sitting freeholder. For people not from New Jersey, what what exactly is <laughs> what a freeholder? Is sure, we're, we're unique in that way. So um, if uh, it's county government, so thinking uh, other states call it county commissioners, and that's essentially what a freeholder sure. is. Um, and so we do all of the... Um, approve all the grants that come into the county, uh, control um, and maintain the, the budget for the county, approve that, as well as county roads, we maintain them, the uh, community college budget, and, and the vocational school that we also have within our county, we control that as well. And so there are a number of different things that we do on a county level to assist municipalities and in and, and the state as well, in terms of the pass-through of grants that provide necessary and, relief for our residents. And so when you ran in 2018, uh, you had this, like you said, you had the support of the party. And what, what I think is so fascinating about your race this time around is it's, is it's the reverse. For people who don't know, in, in, in 2018, the party also endorsed Jeff Van Drew, who's kind of the boss of the, the local machine, pushing aside a couple of progressive challengers in the primary. Progressives were warning, like, this, this guy is as far right wing as you can imagine. Uh, they were clearly right. He's now an actual uh, Republican. And so people mm -hmm. thought, well, okay, they really screwed that one up. You know, they'll, maybe they'll, they'll go hands off in, in the next primary. It doesn't look that way. It's, from the reporting that I've been able to do, looks like the, the, the county bosses are getting behind Bridget Harrison, who's never run for office before, is a, is a professor. Uh, and is pushing the DCCC to uh, in, endorse her. Ha, do you, are you sensing that the local party has rallied around uh, your your opponent, and you're going to have to run an insurgent campaign this time? So I, there is what we call a, a South Jersey leadership m machine, right? Um, they have, you know, rallied around uh, another candidate. That is, in fact, correct. However, um, and I, I say this wherever I go, to be clear, this race has just started and we still have conventions to go. County committee still has to have their say in terms of who gets the endorsement of the parties. And I'm running not necessarily for the leadership. I'm running for the people um, because 
we need to have a say in who we have as our, as our elected official and who's going to advocate for us in Washington. And so I'm running for their endorsement, not for the endorsement of leadership. Mm -hmm. And so, Ashley, I mean, from that perspective, are you frustrated that you've seen, I mean, Ryan has covered this extensively, the DCCC mm -hmm. picking winners and losers, telling people who can work with them or not? I mean, have you have faced institutional pressure like that when you're going up in such a hotly contested race? I, you know, I have not had the same experience, mm -hmm. I would say, that previous candidates have had um, because I am a seated elected official. So... Um, I've proven myself that I can run a race, I can win a race, and I can serve in government. So my experience has not been um, that much the same. Uh, I think that there's still room for, I haven't spoken to party leadership. And on my behalf, the door is always open, right? This is a, this is a movement um, that me and my supporters are, are fueling and are, are pushing. And it's about everyone. And the way in which I see my party and my identity is it's really not about lanes and labels. It's a party of nuance where we all really want the same thing. We just have different ideas of how we get there. And that's okay. And I'm open to conversations. But I have not had the exact experience, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I, I think what's interesting here, too, is that there, there's kind of a sign of a collapse of machines going on here. Uh, just yesterday, uh, the Queen's machine, which is now run by Greg's, Greg Meeks in New York, tried to endorse Joe Biden for president, but a bunch of other Democrats came to the meeting and basically blocked the machine from endorsing Biden. That, that would not have never happened in the past. In the past, the machine meets at a diner. Mm -hmm. they, endorse, they endorse who they want to endorse. The, the South Jersey machine, from what I gather, reached out to the DCCC immediately and said, Bridget Harrison, this is who, this is who we want to run. Uh, you know, come in here and endorse. And the DCCC hasn't done it yet, like you said, which is a sign mm -hmm. of a little bit of humility on their part. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about some of the other pushback that you've gotten to run? Tell us a little bit about your day job and how that's been brought into the, que into, into the question. So uh, what I do is I'm a psychiatric emergency screener in another part of the district that I'm not elected in, right? And I work and I do um, crisis work. We maintain um, a 24-hour suicide hotline. We do outreaches with police in the community to assist families, to assist uh, people who are a part of our mental health and substance abuse populations. And we try to link them with the necessary inpatient treatment if needed on a crisis basis or link them with outpatient services. So I get to see the holes in healthcare up close and personal. And so that aspect of wanting to go and fix healthcare is what drives me. And it drove me ultimately to be a voice for a constituency that's largely overlooked in government on all levels of government, which is, you know, our substance abuse population, our mental health population, and working class families. And so I've been told um, in a few conversations, well, are you going to quit your job? Like, do you even have time to run? Um, and I... I worked a job and I ran for freeholder. However, this is a different scale and I understand that it takes more time and dedication, but I'm willing to put in the work that I need to, to, to run. But also do we ask men <laughs> who have jobs or who also are elected, right? That what are they gonna do about the, the priorities and responsibilities that they have? Um, and we don't. And so I call foul on that. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to to run a successful campaign. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an interesting uh, thing. It's an interesting race, and we're going to keep our eye on it. Thank you so much for joining us, Ashley. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Next on Rising, former Vice President Joe Biden he addressed impeachment and his electability during a stop in New Hampshire. Needless to say, a few of those comments raised a few eyebrows. Fox News political reporter Paul Steinhauser gives us an update from the ground when Rising continues.